And the main thing we do is we distribute and we register um, IP addresses and autonomous system numbers. So uh, we maintain the RIPE database uh, where this information can be found um, the, and the routing registry. Next to this, uh, we also do um, a few other technical services for the good of the internet. So uh, for example, uh, we run one of the 13 uh, root zone servers, the K-root, um, the reverse DNS and secondary DNS. Um, we also uh, have um, internet measurement platforms such as RIPE Atlas. We provide a lot of data and statistics um, via RIPEstat. Um, we have a lot of other widgets uh, that you can use uh, in order to do network analysis and so on. Um, and we also maintain the RPKI Trust Anchor and the RPKI Validator. So this is just a small section of the things that we do. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, so I'm going to um, move on uh, talking a little bit about um, the um, academic initiatives that we've done. So maybe some of you have already heard of RACI. Uh, so that is, the, uh, it stands for the RIPE Academic Cooperation Initiative. This is something we started um, some six, seven years ago when, as an attempt to connect um, the research community and the RIPE community. So um, we acknowledge that finances are often a big burden to academics when trying to attend a conference that is a week long. That is why we decided to create this program where we invite contributions from uh, academics, we invite academic presentations, and we select um, a selection of those and we pay for the academics uh, travel expenses as well as the accommodation and the meeting ticket and we get uh, to hear their presentation at the right meeting. Um, so that is uh, the program in a nutshell and I also wanted to show you um, a survey that we did with recent um, um, successful academic applicants. So the, 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 the biggest takeaway that they have from the program is the contact that they get with industry professionals. Um, a lot of them also receive useful feedback on their research. Um, they learn about new ideas, tools, techniques. Um, they meet people they can collaborate with. However, I really want to stress here that this program is uh, really a both way. So academics get the, the benefit of talking to practitioners, but also it is for the right community um, and set practitioners, set network operators um, uh, advantage to hear about the most recent research that is going on. Um, and they also get ideas from you. Um, so far, um, um, so um, just to give you a quick idea, um, usually per round, so um, we have two rounds in, uh, in spring and in autumn, per round we receive about uh, 75 up to 100 applications. Out of those, we accept 10 for the big RIPE meeting and for the smaller meetings such as MINOG, ENOG, SE and the RIPE NCC days, we accept two to three applications. Um, so since 2015, we have accepted um, about 78 academics from 32 countries. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to tell you that we have a lot of information on the website. Don't worry about this link. I'm going to um, write it in the chat um, after I finish talking. Um, but on this link, you can find a lot of all of the presentations of um, former uh, uh, successful RACI applicants. Um, and also you can see the website uh, on, on the slide, the link to subscribe to the mailing list, which I'll also post in the chat. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to share with you before handing off to Rumi is uh, about the informational academic sessions that um, Right NCC has been organizing. So as you can see on the screen, the, uh, we can cover topics such as internet fundamentals, routing, the RIPE database, IPv6, RPKI, internet governance. Um, so usually in the past, we did those in person for the past five years. Um, the, the universities invite us and for, they would usually have um, a certain class in mind, whether it is a bachelor or master student, we can adapt the content based on how advanced the students are. Um, as I've also pointed out, th those are normally computer science students Although there are some sessions such as internet governance that are also interesting for law students. Um, and uh, the, the good or maybe the interesting thing about those informative sessions is that we try to have a little bit more practical um, rather than theoretical. 
um, and uh, we try to cover uh, current developments and ideas uh, and dilemmas. And the idea is to um, encourage um, um, the students to, to ask questions and have a really um, lively Q&A at the end of this. Um, if you are interested to have such a session in your university with uh, Corona around, we are now doing those online uh, via Zoom. So if you're interested, please uh, drop me an email um, and we can arrange something. Um, I know now it's summer, but uh, when autumn comes and uh, uh, classes resume, uh, maybe that would be uh, a good time to do that. Um, so with this, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see the chat. And I'm going to hand over to Wumi, uh, who is going to um, talk about um, our e-learning opportunities. Um, one second. I hope you can all see my screen now. Yes. Okay. Um, and let me see if it works. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so, yes, as Kirkana said, my name is uh, Rumi Kanis. I'm the head of learning and development. Um, and I'm going to just give you an introduction um, of all the activities we do for our members and, uh, and community at large. So um, our main activity actually is to deliver training courses across our service region. Um, so usually uh, the trainers travel all around Europe, Middle East and Central Asia to deliver uh, training courses on a variety of topics. Um, and on top of that, we also deliver webinars online. Now, obviously, due to the current uh, COVID crisis, we had to uh, quickly adjust uh, our way of working and stop traveling and uh, meeting people in rooms. So we actually, over the past few months, converted um, all our material to, uh, to online sessions, um, which are available uh, to our members. So if you're a member, uh, you've probably seen the announcements and you're more than welcome to join. If you are not a member and you would be interested in joining any of these sessions, you can always contact us and we can, um, we can see what we can do for you. Uh, so the training courses or the topics that we do um, are on a variety of topics, as I said. We have some administrative topics and some more technical topics, um, going from the RIPE database to BGP or RPKI and routing security, and obviously also IPv6. Um, and uh, uh, we provide these sessions, as I mentioned, mainly for our members. We also provide a learning platform, which is the RIPE NCC Academy. And here uh, we have um, non-live modules, so st static modules that people can access anytime they want to. This is not just for members, but for everyone. So uh, you can just log into the academy.ripe.net uh, by creating a free SSO account through our website. Currently, we have three courses there, the RIPE database, um, IPv6 ba basics, and introductions to new LARs. But um, we are working very hard to uh, release new content this year. So uh, the RIPE database, we've just uh, uh, released back in January a new version, because obviously material and circumstances change, so we often update our material. Um, and uh, in the coming months, we're going to be releasing two new IPv6 courses. IPv6 fundamentals and um, at the end, towards the end of the year, um, IPv6 security. Um, the content we offer on the RIPE NCC Academy is in parallel to our certification program, which I will tell you about right now. So this program, the Certified Professionals, a very exciting new program that um, we launched uh, last year. So. Basically, we've been doing via the academy um, assessments of uh, students so they could take an exam at the end of, of doing the course on the academy 
Unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to test or assess the identity of people taking these exams. And we wanted to make it uh, more interesting and more valuable for, uh, for people who took the exams. So we've worked on a program um, that allows us to, or allows our members and uh, community uh, stakeholders to uh, do an exam. And during this exam, their identity will be checked um, and uh, remote proctor will ensure that uh, all protocols are being followed because um, as you know uh, you may know if you work with a learning management system yourself we work with Moodle for example it's quite hard to assess or to check the identity of a person so for us it was quite important to give value to our certificates to ensure that whoever is taking the test is really the person who's taking the test and deserves uh, the certificate so we launched this uh, uh, in April and um, people can now get certified on uh, the RIPE database. Um, at the end, once they obtain their certificate, they get a digital badge that they can share on social media, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, any, any uh, program they can. And the beauty of this is um, that employers can verify the certification. They can click on it and they can see, or potential employers can click on it and see what skill the person who did uh, the test uh, has acquired. So currently, uh, the one we launched back in April is the RIPE database. So if you want, you can get certified on the RIPE database. We are now working very hard on um, the IPv6 fundamentals uh, certification. So that will be released next month already. So if you want to get certified on IPv6, you can do so next month. And towards the end of the year, maybe beginning of next year, we will be launching an IPv6 uh, security certification. Um, and this is uh, a claim that's where uh, you, people or the employers can click on the badge and see what skills were acquired and what the person who obtained uh, the badge or the certificate has learned and will be able to do. Um, this this uh, a claim is, is available uh, throughout the world and um, the beauty of it is, as you can see here, you can tag or you can add elements that people have learned during the certification program. Now, um, one of the things we've had to actually change in both our exams, but also in our content, because we want to ensure that what we offer is really um, useful for the person learning, rather than we just deciding, uh, we think people should learn about the database, we have, um, a, 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 well, employed or adopted a reverse uh, learning model or reverse material development model, which means that we start at the job task analysis. We have been interviewing or will interview people who do the job that we are kind of thinking that the certification would be useful for. And we conduct interviews and surveys to see, for example, how many times a day do you perform a specific task? How important is certain piece of knowledge for your job? And it's quite a thorough analysis and having the job task analysis allows us then to um, think about, well, which, which questions should we ask to check that people are actually able to do that? And which content should we offer in our material to ensure that people learn what is useful for their job rather than what we think people should be learning? And obviously that then allows us to have kind of a blueprint for the material and to develop the, uh, uh, the exams and the digital badges. And the final stage of digital badges then really allows us to ensure that the skills that people have learned are covered in these badges. With regards to the exam delivery, I mentioned before that we have to check the identity of the people taking the test and also ensure that they don't copy the exam questions so that they are not leaked, so that really we keep the integrity and the quality of our exams uh, intact. So um, the tests can be done in different methods, either um, online with a, a proctor. Um, we also, uh, in the future, we're still testing it, we'll be making use of test centers, a bit like Microsoft and uh, Cisco do it. However, um, I know that Cisco and IBM have also moved to, uh, to online proctoring. Um, we also have an opportunity to do tests via kiosks, 
during events, for example, uh, drive meetings or regional meetings, we can have a kiosk available that people can do the test in if they don't want to do it on their own laptops. And finally, um, we can also do live testing or on-site testing and supervision, um, which I think would exactly, especially be useful for universities where you want to maybe uh, uh, test a group of people all at the same time and a teacher or uh, some, someone of us can help proctor and uh, check the identity of the students and ensure that um, everything is done according to rules. Um, and then I am going to um, pass on uh, the word to my colleague Shafiq. Uh, Shafiq, would you like me to keep the, um, uh, the university, uh, to, to keep the slides or would you like to take control of the slide yourself? Thank you. Yes, please, you can uh, help me in this room. It's five slides, not the least region. So we had visited United Arab Emirates, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Oman, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we uh, were obliged to, to be locked down and I will stop our, uh, this roadshow to universities. So today I will talk a little bit about this uh, blended uh, uh, course or blended uh, learning pilot. Broadly speaking, uh, blended learning just means mix of online and face-to-face -face learning. So uh, as digital uh, and e-learning become more and more uh, predominant in our life, it was uh, only a matter of time uh, before uh, learning become blended by necessity, especially with COVID-19 impact uh, on keeping uh, people uh, locked down in uh, their uh, houses. Next uh, slide, please, Umi. So over the past year, uh, RIPE NCC uh, ran a pilot project uh, which incorporated e-learning materials developed by the RIPE NCC uh, uh, in, undergrad in undergraduate courses uh, at the Computer Science Department uh, at the AOB, American University of Beirut. Uh, here it's uh, worth mentioning that uh, AUB is ranked number one university in the Middle East and in the top 500 globally. So it was a good experience uh, for us and for them. So what about uh, this partnership, what is about? So the RIPE NCC and AUB announced their e-learning partnership last year, uh, providing undergraduate uh, students the latest skills and knowledge in internet uh, network uh, technology. Uh, the enrolled students uh, were asked to complete online models consisting of videos, lectures, and assessments. So uh, these models uh, were integrated into the AUB course and were delivered through the AUB online uh, learning platform via the RIPE Academy. Uh, this project helped us as RIPE NCC in providing a high quality training material to uh, one of the prestigious academic institutions. And by integrating RIPE NCC learning model, uh, professors offer students the opportunity to advance their learning, and at the same time, they can keep tracking the student progress. Uh, the outcome was very promising, and, and uh, we are very proud of this. That means uh, this, this, successful, uh, this successful implementation and the, the students' feedback uh, uh, encouraged uh, uh, Dr. Haider Sapa, who is uh, the, giving the course at the AUB, to plan to reduce the face-to-face -face sessions and replace it with the RIPE and CC online content. And from a student perspective, uh, the outcome was that the students were so happy that they can compensate it at the end of this blended model uh, with a certificate from RIPE and CC, and at the same time, this will be accounted in their credits. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see here, the team, uh, I presented this in five minutes, but the work was done through the last two years. It was uh, really an achievement and a lot of colleagues from uh, RIPE and CC and AUB were involved to, to reach this wonderful uh, result. Next slide, please. So my final note on this, uh, I believe that the benefit of this blended uh, learning model goes far beyond the world AUB and RIPE NCC. Uh, it rather aims uh, at bridging the gap between the market needs and the and this is really something that 
uh, academics know exactly uh, very uh, hot uh, top uh, issues for them. And they are trying to gap uh, this uh, divide between the market needs and the graduates. And from another side, it helps us to address NCC to reach the communities in the unreachable countries. There are other countries that have trouble, and you can reach them, you can travel them. So this will help us to reach them. Uh, finally, I, I believe that uh, this uh, innovative collaboration and partnership has the potential to reach every education institution and can be delivered through any university online platform and where the students can earn their own RIPE NCC certificate. So if you are interested, please contact us and we're more than happy to discuss this further uh, with uh, you or with your university. Uh, thanks, uh, and happy to answer any question. Thank you, Romy. Thank you, Shafiq. Um, so I, I would like now to open the floor to any questions for both wanting to um, you have more e-learning in the future. In the, in the meantime, I see a few questions in the chat. Um, is there any, I think this is for Rumi, is there any cost for the certification, for the certification exam? Um, yes, uh, the, each, each exam is paid for depending on uh, which level it is at. However, um, when it comes to uh, academia, uh, we think it's very important, as Shafiq already mentioned previously, to kind of bridge the gap between um, what students, let's say, are learning and what is needed in the job market. So we find it very important to offer um, good opportunities for universities to learn about the internet and the ecosystem. So we are more than happy, um, especially if we're talking about bigger numbers, to discuss individually with universities, maybe to enter a partnership to see how we can um, reduce the costs. But typically uh, the average price for an exam um, for a non-member uh, would be, depending on the level of the exam, around 120 euros. Um, that being said, if you are a member, uh, all our members receive three vouchers per year um, to, uh, uh, to do these exams and get certified. But if we're talking about students and uh, 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 groups of people, then um, we, uh, we, as I mentioned, are more than happy to discuss partnerships or other ways to kind of have a system of bulk vouchers available. All right, thank you very much, Rumi. Thank you. Please let me know if you have any more questions in the chat or, or uh, I see that, uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, has raised your hand. Um, please uh, mute yourself. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for the nice presentation. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Shafi, uh, and for your team for inviting us. Uh, this is honestly too good, too good to be true. You know, this is, I wish when I was a student, I had this opportunity. Um, just to answer your question about uh, a quick, probably feedback on our experience on online learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it helped us a lot to shift to online learning. Before the pandemic, when you talk about online learning, there was a lot of resistance. Uh, there was a lot of bias toward online learning, so I think uh, I think we should thank COVID-19 for 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 this uh, shift in paradigm. Now our job is much easier. Now the ministry um, is just reaching to us, and they want us to develop one program in the whole university, just one program by 2022, to be completely online. This was not heard of before. Uh, if you wanted to develop an online program before, you would be looked at with a lot of requirements and a lot of questioning. And so this is just to answer your question. Now, the second, uh, probably now my question. Um, we, have, we have a introduction to computer networks course in the third year and probably uh, We'll probably talk offline definitely to learn from the experience of AUB, how they blended the content of the course with uh, your online material, because we still have to cover the course, the theoretical concepts of the course. We cannot give a course in the university which is completely based on industry. 
So is it possible to have a course where we cover the theoretical part and on top of that, we supplement it with industry related material? This is my first part of the question. The second part of the question, we are honestly overwhelmed with so many suppliers. So how does this compare? And excuse my ignorance to IBM to, so we are really flooded with requests. Thank you. Um, Maybe you start and then I will follow or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Actually, very useful question. And I also, I agree with you in a way, much as the whole COVID situation has caused a lot of issues. I am really impressed in a way that, uh, and happy that we are actually proving that it is possible um, because it has taken us quite some years to get there and to convince the powers that be that e-learning is, is a very good way of offering content. However, I'm also uh, 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 someone who thinks and always have thought and will always fight for that. I see e-learning as a complement and not as a replacement necessarily, because there you cannot replace the uh, direct interaction with, with professors and, and uh, students. Um, with regards to your question about how we did it with the AOB and the blended learning, um, basically what happened is we provided the, the online content, which was kind of, I think, a total of 10, 12 hours of learning content. And the professors of the AUB provided, in addition to that, face-to-face -face content to ensure that the whole curriculum uh, was covered for their students. I do know that the AUB spent quite some effort in providing training programs for the professors to ensure that the professors knew how to blend the online uh, with the face-to-face. -face. And also to ensure that, uh, because I know in, in for example, Lebanon, um, I don't know, how it is in, in, in other countries in the Middle East, but uh, universities in Lebanon uh, have to comply to a certain percentage. Uh, they can only do a certain percentage online and another part has to be face-to-face. -face. So we also had to make sure that, that um, those requirements uh, to ensure that, that the, the course was up to standard were followed. Um, so we worked quite a lot together and uh, the uh, Amer Amer American University of Beirut has a e-learning expert that we worked together with and, and cooperated on how to implement the program throughout the AUB. And then your second question, how, how does it compare to Cisco or to other uh, um, industry providers? I think one big thing now um, that, that RIPE NCC prides itself on and is often um, praised for by, by members and the community is we are neutral and we are not for profit. So uh, we try to make our content as vendor neutral as possible. Now, obviously, in some, in some courses, we'll mention uh, uh, some Cisco coding, for example, because that's more, not, more known in our industry. But we really try to ensure that our content is vendor neutral and um, that the information we give is impartial. Uh, whereas, obviously, if you go to Cisco, and I, I think actually Cisco certification is important and useful for anyone working in the industry, but it is, it is different. It's, it's purely sp focused on Cisco products. Um, and the other thing is we do try to ensure indeed that our content is really related to the RIPE NCC and to the interaction of our members and the community with the RIPE NCC. So when we talk about, for example, the IPv6 protocol or about routing, it will be very much focused on how does that relate to the RIPE NCC and interaction between our membership and the RIPE NCC. There are some exceptions to that, um, like for example, IPv6, IPv6 security or BGP is a technology that is not from the RIPE NCC, but because we know it's uh, used a lot by our members. Um, we uh, have made the decision to incorporate that and to incorporate that in our learning. So longer term, like right now, the uh, uh, certification is, is only database and the next two will be, IP, will be IPv6. But long, longer term, I also expect that we will be developing content that is maybe a little bit less RIPE NCC specific, but we will always try to make sure that we are vendor neutral and impartial. I hope that answered your questions. Thank you. Shafiq, do you, would you like to add something to okay. that? Uh, thanks, Rumi, for this. So just I want to add, uh, for re related to the AUB, our experience with the AUB, 
as the Rumi mentioned, yes, it was a, a blended course. And uh, as I remember, it was the, the first uh, time we started this uh, pilot was 30% uh, online and 70% face-to-face. But as I said, uh, when we had the success of this or the outcome of this uh, pilot, students were very uh, easy to take the, the, the assessment and to have these materials uh, uh, from home. And the professors that they, they saw that uh, the material, they cover what they want to give the students. So the plan was to have it 50-50. That means to have 50% uh, face-to-face and 50% uh, uh, as an online course. Uh, so so we, do, we don't know what will happen now. As we said, this COVID-19 exposed all our plans. So we are trying to adapt and we'll see how to, to follow up with them. So this is uh, related regarding the AUB uh, blended course. Uh, second point about, yeah, about Cisco or what's the difference between us and Cisco. So, one important thing that we are non-profit, we are not seeking for any uh, benefits from you or any academic uh, institutions. Second, the courses that we are delivering or offering are owned by RIPE and CC, and the only ones that we deliver is the RIPE and CC. So we don't uh, have redundancy courses uh, or any other uh, courses that are done by any other uh, organization. So our courses, who it's offered by our organization, by our training, and it's done by our people uh, inside our organization. So this is very important. And, and second uh, important uh, note that I want to share with you, because I have, uh, I see some questions, that it is not, uh, you are not obliged to be a RIPE NCC member to get our academic support. We are non-profit, we are working for the good of the internet, we are working to, uh, to, to educate uh, uh, the internet community in our service region. Uh, we are trying to get uh, the youth and the, the undergraduate uh, uh, to, to get them the tools and the materials needed to, to, to be successful in their careers. So if you would like to be a member, you are the most welcome. You can apply online. It's very easy, very simple task. If not, we can go ahead and work with you. As I said, uh, we have a roomy, uh, here and uh, she can uh, give you the green light to to to, to, to proceed uh, with your request. So I'm happy to, to have your requests and to work with you. Uh, and of course, we can uh, we can book uh, any uh, private uh, meeting to discuss further the details. For sure. And I also would like to add that it's also in our benefit to collaborate uh, with universities because we see we find it very important that the community is involved in the development of the internet and the RIPE NCC. And we find that very often um, uh, university students are, are missing from our community and they are the future of the internet. So we, we want to include them and we want to ensure that the future of the internet is stable so that we get people into the community as early as possible um, already at university age to diversify uh, uh, the community and get more input from different age groups different backgrounds so it's also in our interest to uh, to work together with thank you. you very much uh, Rumi and Dr. Shafi. thank you thank you uh, I saw that Zahra raised her hands would you like to say something or I see that it's down now I, otherwise I can if you want to say something please unmute yourself um, otherwise I can move on to the other questions we've received in the chat. Um, so what uh, a question from Suleiman Musa Yusuf, how to establish collaboration between a university and RIPE NCC? Talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. Contact us and as Shafiq mentioned, we set up a private uh, uh, session or private meeting and we look at your needs and we look at, um, at what your wishes would be and we discuss what we can do and what we can't do. So the very first step is come talk to us. We're very approachable and uh, we love interacting with people and see what the needs are in our community. So you can Thank either, you. I think at the end of the presentation, we'll so, show you some email addresses on, at where you can contact us. Um, and in case of doubt, you can also, if you can't find any email addresses, just write to the right NCC and it will reach the right person. 
I just write, uh, I just wrote my email on the chat and you can do the same Ruby. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's I hear there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you, Rumi. I, I see that there is a question about RACI. Um, members of the academic community that can apply for RACI, do they have to be a part of the RIPE region or people from other RER territories can apply? So the, the answer to that is that um, anybody can apply from all over the world. Um, we do um, have a preference towards um, people from our service region. However, uh, we evaluated the presentations. <laughs> that was an amazing drawing. <laughs> I don't know who did that. <laughs> My kids are not home. <laughs> um, so um, as, I, as I was saying, we collect presentations from all over the world and we evaluate them based on how good they are. We have a team of volunteers um, who independently evaluates the presentations without looking at uh, the country of origin of the applicant. Um, so if, for example, there are um, two completely equal presentations, um, we would go for the one that's from our service region. However, um, if there is an out of service that is a very good presentation, we, uh, we would also select it. We have done that in the past. We have had um, on the list of the past applicants, you can see that we have had people from out of our territory, um, on top of my head, we've had people from Morocco, from Egypt, from North America, from Canada and the States, I think as far as Australia. Um, so I would encourage you, uh, if you're from outside of our subdivision, give it a shot. It's a slightly less chance, but it's not zero. So um, I hope that that answers um, your question. And uh, maybe I have a question for Rumi, um, because I saw that, uh, the original question about how universities can get involved was coming from Zanzibar. Uh, Rumi, um, is there any opportunity for universities from outside of our service region or how does that work? Yes, we are, we are definitely open to that. Um, there is no equal program uh, as far as we know yet in uh, the other RIRs. So um, we would definitely be open to talking about it and see what the possibilities are for sure. Contact us and uh, we see what we can do. Obviously our priority will always be the service region, but uh, if we can uh, help people from outside the service region, we're definitely happy to do that. Yeah. And uh, also I would like to say the, especially the content uh, on the RIPE NCC Academy is open to any COVID-19 now, I, no one knows when we can fly back again. So unless we have uh, certain vaccination and we are really sure that everything is, is okay and back to, to track, I don't know exactly when we can fly back. But yes, of course, we will keep with our uh, offline and online uh, back to back. One thing for sure is that we uh, have decided uh, as an organization to not travel until the end of 2020, 2020. So that means that this year, uh, uh, unless really something urgent comes along, there will be no traveling. And as Shafiq said, depending on how things develop and borders open or traveling becomes easier, next year we'll start doing that again. But it's, it's very hard to predict the future, unfortunately. Thank you very much, Rumi. Um, I see another question, if I'm reading this correct. What about research support? Um, so maybe, I, um, I'm, as I mentioned in the beginning, we also offer quite a lot of tools and data sets that researchers regularly use um, for, for, their, uh, for their studies. Um, we also have a research and development department that from time to time, uh, does projects with academics. Um, in addition to that, um, I already mentioned the RIPE Atlas uh, measurements network. Probably a lot of you are uh, aware of it. A lot of researchers also use the data gathered by RIPE Atlas to, um, to do um, network uh, measurements. Um, just want to mention here that um, if, if you are um, having uh, RIPE Atlas 
probe. Uh, however, credits, your extra credits, uh, please drop any of us um, a line. I, 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 Uh, you can write. Um, we need to know uh, basically your account, how many credits, for what period of time, and for what sort of research purpose and, uh, we can assign the, the free credits. We also have a and book a time slot your identity will be checked so you have to show a piece of id or a passport to your uh, camera um, to a proctor who is located somewhere in the world so this person is trained on things like eye contact so they will ensure that you don't have another screen in the room that you don't have an ipad or phone in the room that you can't take pictures or screenshots of um, the the questions because we don't want them to leak right we don't we want to ensure that it should be difficult and people should put effort into obtaining the exam or else they don't really deserve it. So, uh, so there's, there's that way, that way we check the identity, we ensure that the questions are, uh, uh, can't be copied or leaked, but we also analyze the behavior of questions. If we see suddenly that certain questions are answered too fast, for, to be humanly possible, kind of, we will know that uh, that will have leaked or that there is a problem with it. So we have several measures in place through this online proctor platform that allows us to ensure control of both who is taking the test, um, whether they are able to uh, um, find the answers or cheat by Googling and uh, ensure that the questions don't get leaked or shared online in forums. Um, so I hope that answers the question. You are muted. Sorry, uh, I'm muted. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying, thank you, Rumi. In the meantime, I see that there is a question in the chat that um, in the Middle East and in Iraq in particular, um, um, there is weakness of the internet, especially in browsing educational academic sites and downloading data from them. Uh, why strategic game applications do not suffer from the same weakness? Do they have special servers that are not subject to the known internet policies and protocols? Note that these games are real time with video and heavy design graphics um, and mark uh, Max has answered that games and other content 